Using reflection in .NET, we're able to create instances of objects dynamically. We don't have to have a reference to the type at compile time, which is pretty powerful. But in reflection, there's several different ways that we can create instances of objects. So which one's best? My name's Nick Cosentino, and I'm a principal software engineering manager at Microsoft. In this video, we're gonna dive into some reflection. We're going to look at different ways that we can create instances of objects. We're gonna compare the two leading ways that people use to do this. And then we're going to see something else at the end that maybe works a little bit better. We're going to be using benchmark.net to check out the different performance characteristics. And if you're interested in seeing the code for that, ask in the comments and I'll provide the link to GitHub. Quick reminder to check that pinned comment for a link to my free weekly software engineering newsletter and my courses on Dome Train. Let's check out the code. Okay, so I thought it would be important to test out a couple of different variations for creating instances of objects. We're going to look at three different classes here. They're all pretty boring, but it's all about the constructors. So the first one that we're going to look at is this parameterless class. Very basic, right? There's nothing inside of it. It's just going to be the default parameterless constructor. I feel like that's a pretty common scenario that people have classes they want to instantiate, no dependencies to pass in. So let's see how this one performs. Then I figured we should explore something that takes in a parameter. I didn't know how many parameters to play around with, but I figured at least one would be something different. So this class here from line 136 to 144 just takes in one string parameter. So we'll see how that performs as well. And finally, because primary constructors are getting tons of attention, people either love them or hate them. I'm mostly loving them, but I wish there was some read-only behavior. And there's a couple of weird things I've come across, but I figured toss these into the mix too. That should be pretty important for us to look at. And of course, we'll come back to this top secret part in a little bit. Okay, so as I mentioned, we are going to be using benchmark.net to be able to benchmark the different things that we're looking at here. I am just going to be using benchmark runner. You could use a benchmark switcher if you wanted to go run these independently. If you're curious how that works, you could check out this video and then come right back here to continue on with this one if you want to learn more about benchmark.net. But what we're going to be able to do is use these three classes, and I'm just going to collapse them so you can see them. They're all going to be very similar, so I'll walk through one in a little bit more detail and then for the others I'll skim over them because it'll get very repetitive and I don't want to bore you too much. I know it's programming and that's not super exciting all the time. What we're able to do in this first one here for the parameterless class is going to be setting up getting the type. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm trying to just ensure that I'm taking out as much unnecessary work from the different benchmark methods. Is this going to take much time at all? Probably not. I'm pretty sure at compile time we have this information. That's why we can use type of. But when you see the other one that's coming up, you'll understand why I just tried to pull whatever was unnecessary to be in the benchmark methods into this global setup. The first benchmark we're going to look at is just calling the constructor. This is normally what we do without using any reflection. Pretty straightforward. The next one we're going to do is use activator create instance. And I would say that this is probably the most popular approach for people to use. And you'll notice that I've marked this one as the baseline. The reason I'm doing this is because when I was writing a blog article about this, I was comparing activator create instance with this next one type invoke member. So I wanted to get a baseline to activate or create instance is sort of the current champion that people are using most of the time. And I didn't put it on the constructor because we know this one's going to be faster. I didn't want to have that and make it like all the other ratios compared to the baseline of normal constructor were going to be crazy. So this one was marked as baseline primarily because I wanted to compare these two to begin with. Type invoke member is a little bit more verbose when we're calling it, but this is the syntax to do it. This is where you would pass in the name of the method, but for a constructor, we don't need to do that. We have binding flags for create instance, which of course, that's what a constructor does. And because we're not passing in any parameters, that last null is where we would put the arguments that we want to provide. Overall, pretty straightforward, and the other benchmark classes are almost identical. It's just that we're going to be using the other class names here, right? So the other difference I'll call out is that when we're instantiating these, we do have to pass in parameters. So you'll see, I just have hello world as the single string being passed in. When you're calling these types of reflection methods, you do need to pass the arguments in an array. That's the only reason that there's an array created here. This final class is basically the exact same thing. It's just using the primary constructor type. So not going to spend much time doing that because I know you're curious about the benchmarks. Let's go check those out. Okay, starting with our parameterless constructor. If we look at the constructor call, as we might have imagined, it's basically instant. It's not even being picked up by the benchmark run. It's even telling us with a warning, hey, look, this looks like it's too fast. Probably not going to be measured properly. Kind of figured that was going to happen. But if we check out activator create instance and type invoke member, we can see that activator create instance is 
over an order of magnitude faster than type invoke members. So definitely the clear winner here. You can see what the ratio, right, for the compared to the baseline. Clear winner, activate or create instance when you don't have any constructor parameters. Now, once we start introducing parameters, things get a little bit more interesting. We can see that this benchmark is the classic string parameter class. So one class that takes in one string as a constructor parameter. And the constructor is still the best way to go, of course, but if we're using reflection, activator create instance and type invoke member are extremely similar. We can see that type invoke member was only slightly slower, the ratio here, 1.03, just a little bit off. Arguably pretty negligible, so if you had a really good reason to be using type invoke member over activator create instance. Performance wise, they're almost right on par. And when we look at the primary constructor, it's almost the same set of results, right? So of course the constructor is going to be the fastest, but activator create instance is only a tiny bit faster than type invoke member. In fact, when I ran these benchmarks to put my article together on my blog, I noticed that both of these were actually flipped in this particular case. So they are very comparable. So I would say, again, activator create instance is probably your best bet just because it's common, people are used to it. But if you had a really good reason to be using type invoke member performance wise for these scenarios, when you have parameters passed into your constructor, they're really not that different. Okay, but I did say that I had something up my sleeve in terms of benchmarks here. And that's because there's something else we can explore to create instances of objects. Yes, activator create instance is going to be the one that most people prefer. And type invoke member, not too far off in terms of performance, but the syntax is a little bit verbose. There's something else we can use, so let's jump back to Visual Studio and check this out. Okay, I'm going to add two more benchmark methods to everything that we just saw, and that's going to be because we're going to use constructor info off of the type. You'll notice here that I'm using constructor info, and inside the global setup that we had, I'm instantiating this variable, and it's basically done this way. But I wanted to add these two variations because this is cheating a little bit, I feel. Once we have the constructor info calling invoke, I feel like is probably very, very close to calling a constructor normally. The reason that I think activator create instance and type invoke member take a little bit of extra time is because they're probably looking for this constructor info or something very comparable, right? They're trying to find the method that they can call to create instances. When we have the constructor info, we have the method that can create the instances. So I wanted to prove if we go do this explicitly and we go ask the type, give me your constructor that matches the syntax, then we can call it and kind of put them back to back to get a, a full picture. The difference when we go to look at these other classes is just that we have to ask for the right constructor. So you'll notice that when I'm getting the constructor info here, I'm using type of string here in an array to say, of all the parameters that we're looking for, we just need one that has a single string parameter. And then of course we pass in the string inside of an object array because that's what the syntax requires. So I'm gonna go rerun these benchmarks and we'll see how well these two do compared to our others. Okay, and the results are in. Are you ready? If we check out the benchmark results here, I'm not gonna go through the first three rows again because you already have seen those, but if we check out the constructor info invoke, this is faster than activator create instance, just by a little bit, but it's certainly faster. If you have to chain these two things together, finding the constructor info, then invoking it, it is slower than activator create instance. So if you knew that you were going to be creating things over and over again, and you could get that constructor info one time, then you might be able to save yourself a little bit of processing. Both of these times are extremely fast. So I think activator create instance, again, if you're used to using it, probably no issue. But if you're trying to squeeze every bit of drop of performance out, then maybe getting a snapshot of the constructor info will save you a little bit of extra time. But if we start looking at the situations where we need to pass in parameters, how does this change? If we look at these results, we can see the constructor info, if we already have access to it, is much faster than activator create instance and type invoke member. Order of magnitude faster actually. So constructor is about two and a half nanoseconds and we can see that the constructor info invokes is 15. So definitely slower than just using the constructor. And I should have said this at the beginning, but if you don't have to use reflection to create your objects, don't just use the constructor. That might've been obvious, but I felt obligated to kind of say it out loud. If we had to get the constructor info then call it inline, then we're still looking at something that is much faster than doing both activator create instance and type invoke members. So these two options, 
in my opinion, are much better to use than what we're used to traditionally. Or at least when I say we're used to, than I'm used to. And I think what I see other people talking about online as well. I would recommend, if you have parameters, start leveraging these. But what about primary constructors? Is this any different? And no, this is one of the situations where primary constructors behave very similarly, so that's good news. But the performance characteristics of using constructor info are very much the same. Primary constructor and a traditional constructor that takes in a parameter. So in both of those cases, I would still recommend use constructor info. And those are the results for putting head-to-head -head different variations of creating instances of objects using reflection. We saw that activator create instance is typically a pretty safe bet. However, if you start using parameters being passed into the constructors you want to call, then I think constructor info is going to save you a lot of extra time. So trying to find ways that you can leverage that I think would be a great boost in performance. Of course, if you have things like reflection on your hot path, there's probably some other considerations that you might want to make, but I might imagine that there are scenarios where that exists. I wanted to add in that all of this was being done because I didn't want to make assumptions about activator create instance and type invoke member. I saw some things online that were suggesting one was always faster than the other, and I said I think I need to prove this to myself because I hadn't seen any data points. So I set off to go look into this, and then I realized that constructor info was of course another way that we could go do this, and I got the hint from type invoke member, because type invoke member can invoke any member. And then I realized that when we're using reflection, we can go ask for fields, properties, methods. And I said, well, why don't I ask for the constructor infos? And sure enough, it led to an interesting little realization here. So if you thought that was cool and you want to see some more interesting benchmark results, you can check out this video next. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.